Hey, 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 we are live. Instagram is scaring me because it just said you cannot connect. So, but it looks like we're live. So, welcome, welcome to one more 808 with Clay here at Clay Souza Official, where we talk about flash photography, where we give you tips on how to improve your flash photography, how you take your photography to a next level and create amazing images for your clients that will attract your ideal client. So, I'm just waiting for people to log in. João Saldanha foi o primeiro. E Marco Aurélio, Marco tá lá. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flávio na área. Dani na área. So, people are joining in. Thank you guys for coming. So, tonight I have a really, really good topic, really interesting topic for um, probably people who shoot events. First of all, hey Mark. So, first of all, can you guys hear me okay? Let me know on the, on the, on the comments here if you can hear me all right. Otherwise, I'm going to be talking, 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 nobody's listening, hearing anything. So... It'll be a waste, and we don't want that. This is the channel where we talk about flash photography from beginning, intermediate, and advanced techniques. It doesn't matter where you are with your flash photography. Thanks, Mark. Th sound is freaked. <laughs> I think you meant great. <laughs> I was going to go like, what the hell is freaked? I never it's heard that one word. before. There's a new word for my vocab, Mark. Uh, so, yeah, flash photography. We talk every Monday and Wednesday. We're here live at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time to talk about flash photography. And tonight we're going to talk about... I, I got a question tonight, which was just perfect for the situation. Because we, um, we just did a review session for a bride who had her wedding in a barn. So, and the question that came up today was, what are the challenges for photographing in a barn? I mean, how, what, what should they expect? Because apparently this photographer is going to photograph in this barn for the first time, and he's a little bit uh, worried, and he should be worried about it. Um, because barns are tricky. They are tricky to shoot. So. That's why we're here every Monday and Wednesday live at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time to give you tips and talk about flash photography on how to improve your photography, how you can create amazing images only possible with flash photography. That's from correcting light, that's from lighting the subject or creating flash creatively. It all goes into the flash category, and we're here to answer a question, give you ideas, we do live shootings. So, if you're here right now, I thank you so very much, but tell your friends. So, um, tell your friends about this kid channel. Let's bring a bunch of people over here and get people excited about flash photography. Okay, so Mark, uh, Bre uh, uh, Mark said... I shot my sister-in-law's wedding in a barn. How did it go, Mark? How did it go? And Jeff said he has one in October. So, great timing for this talk, right? Great timing. I'm glad that I'm getting the right timing. So, Mark, uh, uh, tell us how did it go when your sister-in-law wedding in a barn? How did it go? What challenge did you have? Or did you have any? Maybe you didn't have anything, right? So, yeah, North Carolina is very popular for barns, weddings. I mean, the brides love this. On this wedding, Jeff was there assisting me, and he saw what happened, and I want to bring it up uh, because of this question. So we got this question today. I have the question type, because I have like four questions. So, um, but I want to address this one here, because I think this one, because <laughs> Jeff like, I have a sister in a barn. Uh, this one is uh, for me is very important. What are the challenges of photographing in a barn environment? In a barn environment, could be there's a barn, could be just like something that's like brick walls. If you get a venue that own all brick walls, you're gonna have the same type of, of, of issues. 
Um, Mark said, good, fair, small, very dark. Night to light since I was learning Flash. Yeah, so tough to light when you're learning Flash, yeah. Um, yes, great. So, what are the challenges of, of uh, uh, photographing in a barn? I wish I had one formula to give you that would solve all the problems, but as everything in flash photography or everything in photography overall, there's no magic formula. I, th I think in the world or in our life, there's no magical formula that you can just plug in and solve every single situation. What key, in my point of view, my point of view, uh, key to photograph in a barn is go to the location before and see the barn because barn come in very different shapes and forms. Uh, you have the traditional barn that used to be maybe, we shot, we shot a wedding one time, it was in a, it was in a farm, and the barn was actually uh, the place where they had the cows and the cows fed. I mean, it was a real barn, real barn. And you have those fake barns also that create only to shoot, to, 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 to host weddings or any other events, right? We have shot in barns that are made of metal, we have shot in barns that are made of uh, uh, wood, and sometimes um, sometimes it's uh, 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 the wood is lighter, sometimes the wood is darker. So the first, first thing that you should do, if you can, go and visit the barn that, that, that uh, we're going to shoot at, because that makes a big difference. And I'll tell you why it makes a difference. Uh, it depends on how much light, natural light is coming in. So ideally, you want to, sh to, to go and visit at the same time where... Uh, the same time of the event that you're shooting. So if the event is at 5 in the afternoon, try to be there at 5 in the afternoon so you can see the light changes. Um, and why, why do I say it's important? Because uh, uh, we shot in barns where everything's enclosed. So and if the wood is orange, it's more orange, your subject will have orange cast. A, 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 a orange cast to the skin because we attract the, 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 the light on the, on the, of, of the venue. So forget about bouncing light. For, if you shoot in a barn, forget about bouncing off the wall. Your subject's going to be extremely orange. Okay? Like I said, you don't have a, a, a formula to shoot on every barn because every barn is different. But I'm going to show you some techniques that I use, that I've used before that are really, really good, and you can come up with some really, really cool stuff. So, first of all, go and visit the barn at the time of your event. That is very important, so you have an idea of how much light you're gonna have, you're gonna have an idea of if you have natural light coming through, or if it's just the tungsten light that the barns have, okay? That's number one. Now, number two, if you have natural light coming in, like this last wedding that I shot, because we have the barn, and the back of the barn is open, so all natural light coming in, you obviously, at that part where the natural light is hitting, you're gonna have less orange, because now you have the natural light coming in and lighting all of the area for you, which is great at that point, because you don't have to uh, be too much worried about it, uh, being too orange, but that creates another challenge because if it's like this barn where you shot, like let's say probably one fourth of the length of the barn was under natural light, the three fourth was just tungsten light, so that creates a challenge. So every time I turn that way, I have one setting, every time I turn this way, I have another type of lighting. So one type of lighting over here, and another type of lighting over here that creates a challenge. Okay, so you need to be aware of that. That's why visiting the barn is very important. But let's say you're shooting in a barn that everything is orange, so you don't have natural light coming in, just a few small windows around. Um, um, and what you do on that, on, on that situation, right? So Mark is saying here visiting pre-event also allows you to 
beginning to begin to visualize the shots you want to get when you, the event happens. Absolutely, you need to know that too. That helps a lot. So we try to go to venues that you have never shot before. Even venues that you have shot before, but it's been a long time since we've been there, we try to go at the time of the event, at the time of the wedding or the event, to see how things look, if anything changed, so they don't get caught by surprise. Um, sunset time, Dan is saying something important, sunset time, what time is the sunset? All of that type of stuff is always good to go and, and, and check ahead of time. But let's say you went, you got a ahead of time, and you get that surprise, surprise, the barn is all closed up and it's all orange. That tells you the first thing you, you should know. You must use off-camera flash. There's no way to do that without using off-camera flash. You're not gonna have enough light. Remember guys, our eyes are amazing. We can see the light where the camera cannot see the light. So our cameras don't even get close to what our eyes can see. So what you see is not what you're getting. So it's important for you to bring your camera and try some shots. Um, so I'm 100% sure you're probably going to be use some uh, off-camera flash because there's not going to be enough light there. And barns have tungsten light, everything's going to be extremely orange. Okay, what do I use when I'm shooting? I use off-camera flash, usually with the speed lights. Speed lights should be enough to light your subjects, all right? Speed lights like this. On a on a tripod on a on a light stand I'm sorry on a light stand all right pointing this way sometimes I use the mag sphere in it to make that light a little bit softer so I'm looking at the ceiling if the ceiling is metal or something I'm bouncing off the ceiling or I'm doing 45 degrees what I'm not doing is bouncing off the wall we're not doing we're not bouncing off the wall because then you're going to throw orange light into your subject. Okay, so we photograph in this way. Guys, remember, light here doesn't go like this. Light here goes everywhere. So it will get some few light from the flash going this way too. All right, so that's one setup that you can have. You can have this on the top of your camera. Okay, you can have a speed light on the top of the camera and maybe two speed lights off camera. So pointing in the direction that you did. So for this wedding that I was talking about that Jeff helped me, um, we had two speed lights off camera, right? And let's say bright and green is coming from that direction towards this direction. Here behind me, let's say behind me is where it's open, where the ceremony was and where uh, natural light coming in. So wherever bright is coming from, there's no light at all. It's, it's, it's dark, it's orange, there's uh, tungsten light there and a natural light over here. So what we did, we had, I had uh, this guy on the top of the camera, and we had two light stands pointing to where the bright and were coming from. All right, so I'm lighting them with those lights. So I pick a point where I want to shoot them, all right, because the light, so as they move closer to the light, they're gonna get more. As they move closer to the flash, they're gonna get more light. Correct? So they're going to be brighter and brighter to the point they get blown out. So you're going to pick a point where you're going to shoot the bright coming in or whatever you're shooting, right? If it's a, if it's a birthday party or, or, or whatever it is, your subject. Let's talk about your subject. So you're going to pick a point there on the way where your subject is going to be. If you shoot a wedding, it's very, very, very important to know from the coordinator which direction they're coming and if you have like two ways of going like we had uh, uh, tables in the center and there was like two paths where they could come know from the coordinator which which path they take and which direction they come so you can point your light in the right direction the worst thing that you want is to set up your light to point this way and they come through the other to the other end and then you pretty much SOL on that Okay, uh, so get to know what's going to happen before time. Don't wait before time and make sure the coordinator does what they, 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 they said they're going to do and pick a point there where you're going to shoot. That was where you're going to light. That's, 
That point is where you're going to test your light and you're going to shoot them when they get to that point, right? So, bride and groom are coming all the way from there. I'm shooting. I don't care. I, I'm shooting because they come and come and come and come. And when they get to that point where I measure it, that's where I, where I go boom, 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 get a bunch of shots there. They come closer to the flash. They getting brighter. I stop shooting. So how I did this, I picked the point and I put my lighting assistant, also known as Jeff, uh, <laughs> my voice activate light stand, right? Uh, and ask Jeff to stand there at the point where I wanted to shoot and I test my light beforehand. Boom, 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 boom. So I got my light perfect. So remember, you are inside, the light's not going to change inside unless you turn the light off, which they're not going to do, it's going to be really, really dark in there, nobody's going to see anything. Um, so I put, I asked Jeff to stand there a little bit and we took a bunch of pictures of Jeff. Jeff probably is, is the guy who has the most amount of, amount of pictures because we keep testing light on him all the time. Uh, he's a great subject, by the way. So, <laughs> Jeff is standing there. I'm dialing my light. Dunn is dialing her light on what Jeff is. And so, we get a perfect light. And now, all we need to do is just wait for the bride and groom to come in. That's all. No stress. We get the light. We get it correct and stuff. So, bride and groom pass by me. Now, they are behind me, which is the area where we have natural light. All right? Hey, Michelle. Uh, 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 where we have the natural light, okay, right behind me. Now my light needs to change. So Jeff flips the flat, the, the, the speed lights, the light stands, right? That way. So it, it was pointing to the bride and groom. And so bride and groom going by. Jeff flipped the right way. I, I had already pre-measured that like the same way I measured one light. I measure also when they would pass by me because I knew they're going to be there. That's where the ceremony was going to be. So we, I have already had pre-measure. So I just dial my 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 trigger, kill a little bit of the the, the light, all right? I'll increase uh, decrease the ISO a little bit because now I have all of this natural light coming in, and then we shot. And I want to show you some pictures like with hey Michelle, so. Uh, with uh, 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 flash and no flash. Let me show you some pictures so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, this is bride and groom coming down the aisle. So she's still not where I measure. She's behind uh, my, my measuring point, but I'm already shooting. You see how much natural light's coming down there from the back, all right? So that picture's like, no. Okay, and then she gets to the point where I am, uh, she hit to the point where I had measured the light, and this is the difference. This is what we get. If you notice that the door in the back got closed also, which helped us a little bit, because you don't have the blown out sky, uh, blown out scene back there. But that's the difference between, between, um, uh, between, I wish I could share two pictures at the same time. Between no flash, at that point they were far away and the flash didn't, wasn't reaching them because I had measured the light to a point. This is key guys, measure your light to a point. Don't, don't ho just hope that the flash is going to make it all the way over there because you will not. You know, and if it makes it, it's gonna you're gonna get them over there with light, and as soon as they, they do three steps, they're gonna be blown out, right? So this is before they got to the point where I had measured my light, and then they got to the point, and this is what we got. So key here that you need to be looking at, you look at the ambient light. I'm still preserving all the barn ambient light, which is crucial because if your bride, if your subject, if your birthday boy picked a barn to, to have his or her event, it means that they like the, 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 the atmosphere, right? So you can't just go there and blow everything out of proportion. Then, I mean, it's not. One of the biggest compliments that, that this bride made to, to me, because she came today, 
to see the pictures. After she saw the picture, there was a bunch of crying, and, and coordinator was here crying, she was here crying. Uh, she she left Rex about like an hour ago, uh, and she said, "This is I remember this to be exactly what I saw there, exactly what I saw there." I booked that venue because I love the way it looks and you capture exactly what it is. I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than hearing something like that from your bride, from your client, right? Because we're using Flash. I mean, I can't, it, it is, it is, it is what it is. I mean, if I was shooting natural like that, I would be out of luck. So this is, and then she went by me, right? The flash are here in front of her. We're shooting, shooting, shooting. Then she went by me. She passed the flash. And then we did one shot with no flash. So this is what I would get if there was no flash. Look, I'm still preserving the natural light. You can see all the green back there. You can see everything back there. I'm still preserving that, right? But then... This is with flash. What is it? It's over here. Look at my ambient light. I still have the ambient atmosphere of a barn. I still have the greenery out back there, right? I still have everybody uh, uh, well lit. And this, uh, all it, it took was just to flip those light stands towards the bride and groom decrease the power a little bit, decrease the, 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 the ISO a little bit, and keep moving. So, this is, what it, this is how tricky that was. So, but you need to be prepared. We pre-measure all of that light before, and this wedding was a little bit uh, um, uh, it was a little bit, yeah, Jeff is bringing a good point there. The challenge with this wedding was that everything was supposed to be outdoors. The whole wedding was supposed to be outdoors. Um, and what happened was it rained, like <laughs> guests are sitting down, music's playing, first bridesmaid coming through, second bridesmaid coming through, the rain just, it just pours. It wasn't like just rain, it poured, right? So. We had to pivot. Now, the natural light on that wedding was gorgeous, and I was going to go probably most of the time natural light. But we outdoors. had to pivot outdoors when it was outdoors. So, because it moved indoors now, imagine if I didn't have flash. If I did not have flash, or if I didn't know how to use it, I would be SOL at that point. Everything would be blown out, the, the background would be blown out, or everything would be dark. So, let's make sure that we know what we're doing with our flash, with our equipment, right? So, go ahead of time, watch where the shadows are, where, watch where the light is, right? And I'm, I'm giving you an example of a barn that's mixed half and a half. If you, if you um, shooting in a barn where everything's closed, you don't have natural light, it's the same, the same lighting uh, everywhere, you should be all right. As long as you don't bounce off the walls, okay, and use off-camera flash. Now, another thing that I want to touch on is um, grids. This is a grid, okay? This is a MagMod grid. You guys know I'm, I'm a fan of MagMod. I can just put it here. What a grid does, it, it focuses the light. Light travels this way. Okay, light travels this way. A grid would focus their light to travel a little bit more forward. This is another another solution also if you don't want to create light spill. Alright? If you don't want to create light spill, you can use the grid and you can use this guy. I don't think, you guys let me know in the comments here, I don't think there is another grid that's not MagMod, a grid for um, speed lights. I think MagMod is the only one who makes those. You can find grids for soft boxes, but um, um, they are very, very expensive. I have bought grids, 
that costs as much as the softbox, the softbox costs. So grids is a good way to control light. We can have a whole session on grids someday. All right. I like using this guy over here pointing up when I'm shooting barns. Uh, but there's another trick also. Sometimes this guy is not enough. He throws a lot of light up and not enough light forward. You have another choice, which is the mag, the mag, uh, mag bouncer. So you put this on, light's going to come up here and just bounce forward. Yeah, turn sideways so people see it. Yeah, so it will just it will just forward like this. So this is what it is, right? As a disclaimer, as I make a disclaimer, I'm not associated with MagMod. I'm not associated with none of those companies that I mentioned here. I just mentioned them because they provide awesome gear. And it is the gear that I use on every shooting. So I have to talk about them. So this is what it is. Right, so bounce the lights comes through here. If you need more light forward, this is what I use. Okay, I haven't used this a whole lot because this, this is big, it throws a lot of light. But you say, But Clay, I don't have Magmod, I don't use Magmod. These things are damn, damn expensive. It is damn expensive. I agree with you. I'm going to give you a hack. Here's a have a speed light that doesn't have uh, the Mag bounce on this thing. This is an old young one that I found when I was doing my high-speed sync test. I found on my old gear. So, almost every flash have this guy here. It's, bounce, it's called a bouncing card. It's a small white thing here. You're gonna look at this, but this is so tiny. Believe me, it makes a big difference. It, this makes a big difference. It works. It just comes up here. So, it, uh, this one has this little thing here. It's a diffuser that you can use here in front of your, uh, uh, in front of the, in front of the, 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 the flash head that will diffuse the light a little bit. I don't like it because it takes about a, a, a little bit of a, a, a light away. So I just tuck it in and use this. And if your flash doesn't use this, here's, you go ghetto. You get a piece of paper, just like this one here. This is just a piece of paper folded. You put it over here in your flash. Huh, and then you do this. Rubber band and a piece of paper, the cheapest bouncer you can ever find. Here you have a bouncer just like this one over here. This one just a little bit bigger, a little bit easier. I mean, I'm not even easier to carry. There's nothing easier to carry than a piece of paper. Well, it's just prettier. It just looks more professional. That's it. So, right? So, this is a bouncer right here, guys. This works magically. Okay? Cheap. It's just a rubber band and a piece of paper. That's all. This works wonder. <laughs> yeah, that's ghetto. Yeah, no, right? But works, works wonders, right? So there's no excuse. So we are removing all the excuses out of the equation to come up with beautiful photography. Okay, guys? Um, yes, yeah. so do you guys have any questions about this barn thing? Yeah, they're Delmar and Jeff are having weddings. Delmar has had a wedding in a barn. Jeff's having a wedding in a barn. Right? Right, 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 right. So, use the tools that you have. You have a bouncing card here that works. Doesn't work as great because it's not as big, but it works. And you have the, the, the paper hack here. Or, if you have a little bit more resources, you can buy this guy. This guy throws a lot of light. I don't use it too often. I, most of the time, I would say, tell you, 90% of the time, I'm shooting this way as a fill light. Remember, light travels this way. It will fill the light as we need, okay? Uh, but sometimes this is not enough. Sometimes I need more light forward. I go to my bag and grab this guy. And the way I shoot with this, is like this because it has four magnets here I shoot with this like this why because when I go vertical I just do this I don't need to flip it watch that's magical that's like wow hmm. all I need to do is to vertical is to flip the camera if I shoot this way if I was shooting this way with the flash like this I go vertical look what happens I would have to go eh, eh and do all kinds of stuff and do this, right? 
No, just put the flash sideways. It's the same light and you just go like this. Uh, Jeff is bringing up a good point. That diffuser here, if you use this guy, it will, it will limit the zoom to 14 millimeter. I think you can only shoot 14 millimeter or it's the max zoom. I'm not sure. Uh, you can zoom in. But as I never use it, I really don't know. I can't tell you. But there is something about that. Yeah, I read something about that many, many, many years back. So, yeah, this guy here will limit the zoom on your camera. So be careful. Don't use it. Don't use it. It doesn't diffuse that much. So you better uh, 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 go in this route here or this route here. Like this, right? Horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. Okay? All right. Sounds good, guys. Do I have any questions that I need to answer? Come on. Send me your questions. Send me your questions. Send me your questions. Send me your questions. No questions? I really try to keep these lives at 30 minutes so I don't take a whole lot of your time and you have enough topics to talk about, right? And I hope this is all being, being helpful to you and I hope that you guys are telling your photographer friends that we're having this live every Monday and Wednesday at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time where we talk about flash photography. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, give us a like, hit that bell so you know when content is, new content is uploaded. And also, hop into Instagram at Clay Souza Official. That's, that's our Instagram, Clay Souza Official. We've got every Monday and Wednesday at 8.08 .08 p.m. We're here talking about flash photography. A oh, quick question. Uh, you say you got two lights on a stand and one on your flash. You say when the brights come down, you switch them around how do you if Jeff's in one stand and Jeff in the other stand that is simple Delmar Jeff turns one stand and he runs to the other side of the room and flips the other one <laughs> simple like that one at a time one at a time uh, we, we're gonna you're gonna give Jeff something he's gonna become like the, like the elastic man he can like stretch his hands into <laughs> and just flips it and run can, Jeff can run really fast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, just how he did this. So you flip one and then you go to the other one and you flip it. Right? Simple. Don't make it complicated. All right? Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. And we're going to be here next week again. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Ronald said, "Oh, buy four lights." Exactly. But in that case, I didn't need four lights because I have natural light coming from the background. I just needed two. Or I, oh, I get what you're saying. Duh. Yeah. So you're saying like put two one way and two the yeah, other way, yeah, right? Yeah. The same. Yeah. Thing. There you go. That's another way of doing it. You just have to set up four lights because you know once they pass me, it's not a whole lot happening. It's just like just a quick. Quick thing to, to go and, and, and flip. Okay? Guys, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I really, really, truly appreciate your support. And send me topics that you want me to talk about. Okay? And if you have any questions, don't forget to DM me. Send me a DM with your question. And I will answer them either uh, uh, on text or video. And watch the feed because this live is going to be... Um, Upload to Instagram is going to be uploaded to Facebook and it's also going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel. In YouTube, if you, if you search Clay Souza Official, either together or separate, you're going to find our channel there. We have less than 100 subscribers. Uh, Facebook, uh, 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 YouTube still doesn't give you a, a, a proper URL before 100 subscribers. So let's get the subscriber up on YouTube and over here so you can get a nice a nice URL from YouTube. All right? Thank you guys so very much. Have a great night, and I'll see you next week at 8.08 with Clay here, 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye.